Okay, everyone. So welcome to this special episode of Reiki Radio. We have a beautiful guest today named Amanda Collins. So Amanda, first of all, I want to welcome you and thank you so much for being here. Oh, Yolanda, I'm so grateful for, for having me. It's wonderful, wonderful to be here. Yeah, well, I'm really excited because we have so much to talk about. Your work is amazing. And I'm really excited for everyone to hear about everything that you do and how it has shaped your life and supported your community of who you work with as well. So I just want to let people know from the start, you are a feng shui expert and you've even studied in China um, to learn feng shui and studied shamanism in Peru. You're a Reiki practitioner, a yoga teacher, and also a Celtic priestess. So, I mean, all of these, um, beautiful, I guess, lineages, I would say, it seems like all of these different systems that have really come in to support your work. So first, I want to ask you, what is your work about? What is it that you feel so called to share with people and why? Mm, beautiful question. Um, I would say my overall intention with, you know, whatever modality we're using is, um, for us all to have what is our birthright is connection, connection to source, connection to the earth, connection to our hearts, and connection to our brothers and sisters, you know, to feel that, that oneness. So really, that would be the word connection. Connection. That's beautiful. And it's interesting that you say that because one of the things I also noticed on your site was um, you speak about our birthright is joy as well. So I wanted to ask you about that too, because I think that is such obviously like a beautiful component to these life experiences and often overlooked. But what does that mean to you? Like this birthright being joy? Mm. Well, I mean, I think, you know, when we're born, the second we're born, we, we know that we are completely connected to source and we know that we're unconditional love because hopefully for most of us, the second we were born, we were like held and we were kissed and we were loved. And, and, and if, if we were cold, we'd cry and, and the blanket would be put over us. And if we we're hungry, we would have got milk, you know, from the rest or from a bottle, you know, whatever it was. And so we knew the second we were born that we were pure love and that we were pure connection, pure conscious energy. And then experiences happen and you know it's interesting because I have a three-year-old and a six-year-old and it's like always my intention that they stay completely connected to who they are and connected to their inner voice and their own unconditional love and then can be that in the world but there's just things that happen in our lives that uh, take us away from that. And I even see that with them, just an experience with a friend. It's like, you know, it's heartbreaking, but it, it, it's like a part of life or with a teacher or with a stranger on the street, you know? Mm -hmm. And so we can come away from knowing that we are pure source energy and that we are pure love through different experiences. And we forget that our birthright is connection, joy, peace. Like, I mean, that's, that's why we were born, we're, we're these spirits having this human experience, but we forget, oh my gosh, I can actually have joy, like beyond, you know, uh, the day going okay, beyond that, I can actually have joy in my life, and joy for everybody is slightly different, you know, joy for me is being with my kids, joy for me is ceremony, and being out in nature, and, and being here with you, you know, and sharing with, with everybody that's here with us, listening, so um, joy is a different expression for everybody, but that is our birthright, and through all these modalities, whether it's feng shui, or priestess practices, or meditation, or yoga, uh, all of these have the ability to support us to come back into that state of joy. Yeah. And, you know, it's so beautiful you say that because it reminds me of all of these different systems and teachings that we use just to reconnect in with ourselves, you know, after so much of seeking outwardly and it's like all roads point back to you, right? But um, one of the things you mentioned I did want to ask you about is the priestess work. Um, because we do hear a lot now about connecting with the divine feminine and goddess energy and all of these things. And again, you are um, a Celtic priestess and you do priestess work and even retreats to help women acknowledge, connect with, identify with their inner priestess. So what does that even mean to you, a priestess? And 
how does that support us in these journeys? Mm, beautiful question. And um, I, what I know to be true is we are all, we are all goddesses, you know, and we actually all have that divine feminine and masculine within us. Right. And <clears throat> So we're all goddesses. And again, like I shared, whatever our experiences that we've had through family, friends, so whatever society has told us, sometimes it's allowed people to forget, you know, that they really are a goddess and they are divine. And um, so I believe like part of the work of a priestess is helping awaken that back up again. So what is a priestess? A priestess is somebody who can be really grounded in this world and be centered. In, in who they are and where they are, but also be connected with other worlds, the underworlds and the fairy realms or whatever the other worlds are. And they can still be grounded and be connected. So, you know, it's such a gift when like the beautiful energy work that you do, you will be channeling source energy, but at the same time, you may be discussing with the client, well, you know, it's, you know, practical things that are going on in their lives while channeling this energy. So it's like being connected here, but also present, completely present with, with whoever it is you're with in that moment. So I would say that's one very important thing. And then a priestess is somebody who wants to be of service in their community and somebody who's willing to be accountable for their own energy and willing to do their own inner work, right? Because yes. being out in the world is, is vital, but you have to be willing to do your inner work. And it's almost like a daily thing. Like what is, what are your daily practices? You know, for, for me, it's every day, as soon as I wake up, before I get dialed into any kind of social media or responding to the outer world, I go inwards and I meditate, you know, and usually I'm up, don't let this scare you, but like 4.30 a.m. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, I, you know, the, the veil is so thin at that hour. Like right. it's just, the world is so quiet that it's just such a magical hour. And I, I really feel it's my consciousness saying, okay, up. Up, up. And I'm delighted because the house is so quiet because the rest of the day, the house isn't quite so quiet with a three-year-old, a six-year-old, my husband, you know, all going around. Right. So actually I savor those moments and I get to go inwards and I get to connect, you know, with how I feel emotionally, physically, spiritually, connect with the cosmos, the stars, you know, and the moon and, and then center myself for the day. So that's like one major practice. And then getting out every day in nature, in the forest, the beaches. I mean, I live in the country in Ireland and we had a beautiful chat already. And I was sharing with you, like there's nothing, there's sacred sites, there's 30,000 sacred sites in Ireland between fairy forts, sacred wells, stone circles, standing stones, cairns, you know, and so you know, connecting with these, doing ceremony, you know, so I have daily practices that help me stay centered so I can fill up my own well and then I can be of service. Because if you're going around being a service and you're either people pleasing or you're burnt out, you really aren't really much use and you're, are you coming from that right place? So a priest is someone who's willing to be completely of integrity, who is willing to do their own inner work, willing to be of service. And you know, is willing to connect with those other worlds. So I feel like it's hard to put into a description of, of a couple of moments, but that they would be the main things that, that I would say. Yeah. So there's two things coming up in hearing you say that. One, I think it really speaks to that aspect of your work that taps into the sacredness of our being. Um, and that beauty, I think it's really magical that we have that ability to be so in connection with spirit while simultaneously being very engaged with the material realm. I mean, it's unbelievable, really, when you think about it, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's like existing in two realms simultaneously or multiple realms simultaneously. But one of the things you mentioned, and I wanted to ask you about too, is being in nature and the sacred sites because we did talk and you spoke about how your connection with nature um growing up it's kind of like you've always been connected to like other worlds so to speak so could you share a little bit with us about yeah, that like, how you grew yeah. up and how that has shaped where you are now Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd love to. Well, I really do believe my dad 
and then back lineage he's he's a druid like um and he is just so connected he runs like an organic farm here so he's just so connected with the land and it's it's all done in complete harmony with the seasons and you know no pesticides or fertilizers it's just like okay for the next few months this field has to be covered in clover you know like a little flower actually that feeds the land back it's just all organic and it's actually tuning into the land and like what you need right so to go, how my journey started was I think my parents told me they first took me camping I was three weeks old and they camped for like two weeks in the middle of a forest and I think my grandmother was like you're crazy what are you taking a three-week-old camping for two weeks <laughs> but that was the start of it so I was hooked you know and I I was raised in in the country um and I I had horses and I literally would just go all day long I would be I, I just love to even be mucking at the stables the smell of the manure like not to gross any of me out but it was like oh this is so good like just and horses are all intuitive they don't even have that front part of their brain that oh they're thinking or judging it's just all feeling for them wow. so I would go on the horse and we'd go to all these sacred sites and it was like a form of meditation because it, sometimes it'd be just me and my horse out for like eight hours 12 hours you know and just in this silence and I think that's what really got me connected to, to other worlds because I was in the silence of things it wasn't the busyness and the rushing around it was just the beingness you know and I, I'm talking about from like age six seven all the way up um, and if my mom be like come sleep inside in the bed I'd be like really do I have to she'd be like yeah you're coming in you know <laughs> I'd be very happy to sleep out the stable so like and, and I was very connected with the fairies and the spirit world and then um I shared with you then I got to those teenage years and I discovered boys and I it got rebellious and, and they call it this like this archetype the teenage archetype so whether it comes in your late teens your early 20s mid 20s whatever it is and you want to find out your own truth and who you are and it's like okay this is what society told me this is what parents told me now I'm going to go find my truth and you know you we want to push all those boundaries we want to explore. So I would say that was me really exploring the, the, the human side. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. And then, yeah. then when I, I moved to America when I was 20, and people used to come into my home there and be like, oh, did you have your house feng shui And I was like, feng what? What are you talking about? <laughs> and after about eight or so people said to me, I was like, I'm going to find out what this feng shui stuff is all about. And I really that put me back on such a major journey of my spiritual path. Um, and I also, when I first moved to America, I met this guy and he was like my greatest teacher. You know, we've all had one of those relationships, great yeah. teacher. And I, like, I realized that was an energy I was carrying and I was attracting this relationship. And so it really put me on this path of like healing and, um, and just my, my, back deep on that spiritual path and here we are 20 years later and I've been just as deep on that path the last 20 years um that is yeah. really amazing I mean again I'm taking notes because I'm like oh oh there's so many things that you said um one of the things um that I love that you said and to point out for people is those phases like the teenage phase that we went through and how a lot of times we carry this energy of regret or upset over our past and what we should have, would have, could have done. But, you know, just like you and I spoke about before, those, those experiences remind me a lot of like part of our initiation, like part of like this very human experience is so vital to us having understanding and appreciation as we start to wake up to that higher aspect of knowing who and what we are. But what was really interesting about what you just said to me is what you recognize what you were carrying that attracted in um, the person that you were in relationship with, but also acknowledging that it was a great teacher for you. So I wanted to ask you about that. When you are working with people and, you know, whatever brings us into this work, whatever, you know, catapults us into all of this is a big part of it for you and what you do, is it that self-recognition and acknowledgement before just the, what's out there? Like, why? Why is this happening to me? Who and what? And do you take people into that space of what? Yeah, that that's a great uh, question. And I think that um, a lot of people go onto a spiritual path, and it is not the case always, but a lot of people are going through some kind of transition some kind of trauma, some kind of health, um, you know, prosperity, something that 
makes them think, oh, there's got to be more than just this brick and, water, brick and mortar. You know, there's got to be more. And it, it, in some ways, like, you know, and I've had a number of experiences over the past 20 years that has brought me down to my knees. And it like, it just like humbles you and it, it makes you search your soul that, that bit more even deeper, you know? And so I'm not saying in order for somebody to get on a spiritual path, something has to happen to them because we're just... I feel like we're, we are these spirits and some of us are more curious, some of us less curious, some of us is just like, a, it's just like a dharma, it's just a soul purpose. It's just like, that's who you are, that's the air that you breathe and there's nothing more about it, you know? Um, and, and yeah, there definitely is a rite of passage, passage. There is an initiation and whatever it is that, that brings you into that, for me at that time, it was that relationship <clears throat> that I was in and, and I was trying to understand why would I want to be in this kind of a relationship? It's, it's so self-sabotaging you know what is it that I'm carrying what and I was like the wanting to understand the why you know and so what tools is there to help heal this and to see and understand this you know so it could be the path of the priestess it could be Reiki it could be yoga you know we'll find whatever it is that resonates with us for that period of time or for a long period of time to to kind of heal whatever needs to be healed and but you know we're, we're like these these beautiful lotus flowers that come out of the muck, but we're also like these onions and there's a layer and then there's another layer. And then, and then, you know, we get to a certain stage and then it's like our destiny. There's certain soul agreements that we have agreed to have, like, you know, okay, I'll come in in this life and I will agree that I am going to learn about compassion or patience or unconditional love or whatever it is. And then the universe will go, okay, you've agreed to this. Okay, here, here, I'm going to throw this at you and you're going to show us that you can love unconditionally. Yeah. You're going to show us whatever, whatever that scenario is. And then you're going to come back around to loving yourself unconditionally, you know? And um, so it doesn't need to be a major initiation like that for everybody, but I am sure everybody has their story and everybody has something that we're here to learn in this physical body. Otherwise we wouldn't be here in this physical body. I love that the way that you pose it though, and I think it's a good reminder for all of us is, why is this coming up for me? What am I holding in my space? I, I think that's a beautiful, um, just, you know, way of looking at it and questioning instead of, again, like pointing out there, which, you know, we can do. <laughs> but just like you said too, it was interesting listening to you say that. I'm like, there is something about this work, no matter which path you take, that really does humble you and get mm -hmm. you to a place where it's almost undeniable, that mirror that's standing in front of you. But one of the things I wanted to ask you about too, because a lot of your work, you take people on retreats to these sacred sites. So I know that you have um, a priestess retreat coming up in August in Ireland, and then also taking people to China to visit sacred sites in October. I wanted to ask you first, what is the significance, so people understand, of sacred sites and the energy of these places? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and as I, as I was saying, Ireland has <clears throat> thousands and thousands of these. And so if you're familiar with, if you've ever tried acupuncture or energy lines, we have meridians in our body, right? You know, so you go for acupuncture and they may feel like you're chi deficient and they'll get the needle and they'll put it in a meridian and you'll feel the energy disperse and then you'll like, oh, wow, that pain's gone or I have more energy or whatever it is. So our earth is the same thing. There's all these beautiful energy lines, meridian lines that run through the earth as well. Some of them are called ley lines. <clears throat> there's uh, dragon lines, there's water lines, there's actually fairy lines, there's spirit lines, like there's all these different lines. And then there's things called geopathic stress, which is, which can be done from things like earthquakes and volcanoes or just major building that's done on the land. But the really heightened ones are like ley lines and they actually connect all across the globe. So for example, you know, we have Newgrange here and many other sites, but Newgrange, you know, is aligned with the winter solstice. And so basically 20th, 21st, 22nd of December, that sun shines all the way down through the chamber. And there's a line of energy and you can feel it. The second you stand in this line of energy, you can just feel everything in your, your cells heightened. And so this ley line will connect with the ley line of the pyramids in Egypt, which you're so connected with, <laughs> and then connect with Machu Picchu in Peru, which will connect with Delphi, Greece, which will connect with the Temple of Heaven in China. Like, so all these ley lines. So when you stand on these, you are standing in the energy of all the sacred sites all over the world. And so 
everything is magnified. Healing is magnified. Uh, sorrow is magnified. Uh, your, your power, like if you want to open up to your, your sovereignty, like all, everything is enhanced. So on these sacred retreats, we go to these sites, we do ceremony, we, we, we tune into this energy and we, we harness this energy. So, um, it's really, really amazing. And it's incredible to do ceremony on, but to live in these lines can call health, health issues because, you know, it, your whole system is, is like everything's increased, you know, so your hair grows faster, everything when you're at these, these lines. So to live on those, people would end up with health problems, you know, their nervous system would be too much. And so they're powerful to do ceremony on. And when you think about it, when you go to these sacred sites, our ancestors all over the world for thousands and thousands of years have honored the sacredness of each other, the land, the moon cycles, these, you know, these sacred times of the year as we move into in bulk right now. And so to come on these sites with intention, doing prayer, doing ceremony, and being at them, like it just creates, it, it's, it's powerful, powerful, powerful work. That is so amazing, beautiful. Yeah, and I, it's like, I have to go to the pyramids, of course. That's like on my yeah. list of, yeah. I mean, I would like to go to several sacred sites, but that's the one. I'm like, I have to go to the pyramids. But um, since you mentioned that, um, it, I want to ask you as well about these universal energies that we're all in connection with. And just like you mentioned, in bulk and when this airs, it will be the new moon in Aquarius. So, <coughs> sorry, just getting over a cold. Okay. I wanted to ask you if um, you could share with us the significance of like the current energies we're in or even the energy of the year and how that is, how we are in connection to all of this. Mm -hmm. Well, this is a very special time. I mean, I think every single day is sacred. It doesn't have to be ooh, new moon or whatever. Every day is sacred. We get to wake up and breathe and see a sunrise or a sunset or gaze into our, our beloved's eyes, you know? Um, however, here on Sunday, we have our new moon because, you know, it, it's related with the solar calendar, right, of the Chinese New Year. That's also, it's a new year. Like, yes, January 1st is a Gregorian New Year. But of course, because I'm a practice feng shui, I really celebrate the Chinese New Year as well. And then it's also in bulk. So from the Celtic wheel, the wheel. So we celebrate all the equinoxes and the, the solstices, winter and summer solstice. But then we've got the midpoints between those on the wheels. So December 21st, we went up to that cairn um, and honored the winter solstice. And that time of year is, you know, about going inwards and um, giving, you know, just acknowledging what nature does. It's releasing the leaves from the trees. The, the land is, is resting. Everything goes into hibernation. And, and over here in Ireland and different areas in the world, mother nature commands that like it's snow you're snowed in or you're you know it's raining for days or whatever it is like that and people living in parts of the world like san diego for instance it's amazing because you have amazing weather every day however you are missing the cycles like you so you're always on the go and you don't get that whole couple of months of the year where it's like okay i've really got to slow down so it's got to be a really clear intentional thing that you would do so here we are now we're right at this midpoint in between winter solstice and the autumn, the spring equinox, and it's called in bulk. And we look at the, the earth and the earth is just starting to waken up. It's like the first sign of spring. Uh, little buds are starting to come on the trees. And, and if you look at nature, it models everything for us. Like the trees aren't rushing around trying to do everything. They just, they just are, they, they're not trying to prove themselves. Like they're not rushing. Oh, I've got to get this fruit out. I've got to get these leaves out. You know, it's just like, they stand grounded and they're reaching up to the light and they're not asking permission how they can grow. They're just actually reaching towards their light, right? Um, and so if we can model that in nature, you know, it, it rests when it needs to. It, it lets itself fully blossom when it wants to, you know? So if we can kind of reflect that, and that's why um, to really live with the seasons is so vital because it lets us rest, it lets us go inwards, and it lets us expand to that most yang, you know, summer full time of year where, where it is the time of year to be active. But then it invites us to do all the other parts that we're meant to do. So right here, the day that everyone's listened to it. So it's so it's such a special day. Take some time to stop and to breathe and to to be present with this new energy that's coming in. 
every month we get, it's like the dark time of the, of the month, right? It's the new moon is there. You just can't see it. The sky, the sky is, is dark, but it's like, you get to plant your seeds for that, that whole new moon cycle ahead. Mm -hmm. And then, then we've got in bulk, which is representing coming out. And then we've got the Chinese new year and this new year of the earth, earth pig. Um, it's a really good year. We, from a feng shui standpoint, we look at <clears throat> this, uh, it's called flying stars the energies that come into our homes and we all have the eight in the center of our home and the eight represents infinite abundance it represents joy speaking of joy and abundance and that is in the center of all our homes um so it's really this only happens once every nine years and um, so it's it's a very supportive year ahead so um all that new energy is coming in today <laughs> that is beautiful. And so that I'm glad that you mentioned that because I wanted to ask you about that um, aspect of your work, the feng shui. So one, how did you even get on the path of feng shui and ending up studying in China? But what does our environment, like how important is that to the impact on us and how we function or what's going on in our lives, our abundance, all of these things? How significant is our environment? Well, if you think about it, we spend up to 80% of the time indoors, 80%. And like for you and I, you know, we, we have our own beautiful light work businesses. And so we work from at home as well. So like the home is so vital, right? And what happens a lot of the time is when I walk into somebody's space, the home is reflecting what's going on in their lives, right? It's an outward reflection of what's going on inside. And there's so many telltale signs. First of all, I feel an attuned energy. It basically speaks to me. I can feel it, you know? But then there is just looking around somebody's home. And when I go in and all the light bulbs are burnt out, they're usually, I'm like, are you, are you a little burnt out? They're like, how do you know? It's like, well, every single light bulb's burnt out or every clock's not working. I'm like, are you laying up stuck? Like time is standing still. They're like, how do you know? Or I'm just like, well, the home's got this, you know, or door handles are loose. It's like they don't have a firm grip on life or um, the plumbing and feng shui is very much so related with our emotions. So they're always getting blocked plum uh, plumbing. It's like, are you really honoring the emotions that, that you really need to be allowing yourself to feel and express, mm -hmm. you know? Or water is very much so associated with going with the flow and it's abundance. So if they have leaking faucets or taps, usually there's money issues. So like it's it's kind of mind blowing. And somebody that's not conscious in their environment, a lot of time I'll go in, the environment is representing their past, uh, old patterns, old beliefs, and you know, stuff that they've been handed down that they actually don't even like stuff that they've inherited, presents they've got that they don't love, they don't like. And why do they keep it? Because guilt you know, oh, what will that person feel? And, and then that's people pleasing. And like, here's the thing, your environment, you get to choose. Like you don't get to choose for the tea shop, the restaurant, the college, all the other places you go in and the energy is as it is. But in your own home, you get to create this beautiful, beautiful sacred space. You get to choose because it is scientifically proven now. Everything's made up of energy. So energy can either be blocked or it can be just flowing and support you. So the intention of really of feng shui is who you are now. And then even more of like who it is that you want to become, uh, how you want to express yourself in the world, what you want to open up to more in your life. And so your home can represent that and raise your vibration versus, versus the latter, which I was discussing. Yeah. You know, I can't believe I forgot to mention this when we spoke before, but the, um, house that I live in now, when we came to view it before moving in, it was interesting to me that all of the beds in every room were facing the same way. And then also the front door is blue. And for some reason, something told me to look this up and it actually was correlating with feng shui. So I think whoever, I mean, obviously oh. they had some intention around it. Yeah. The direction of the front door there was a recommendation that that door be blue or, you know, I was like, Oh my gosh, they really, they had this all set up. Um, so it's interesting. But one of the things I want to ask you and share with everyone. Uh, that's um, amazing. because It looks like blue is definitely your color. So that oh, water. Element, yes. So that's amazing. <laughs> I love blue, blue and purple, but blue, I love it's true. Um, so one of the things I wanted to uh, ha have you share with everyone because uh, the energy of our home, but you also do work with businesses. Like again, on your site, I saw like you even consulted with like Bloomingdale's and Hewlett Packard, Packard and 
these different companies and you that first of all, I have to say that's amazing. I think that even um, in bigger industries that this type of work is now being sought out. I think it says a lot about us culturally now and what's happening in the world. But is that very common for people to reach out just to have the feng shui done around their business even or their office environments? Yeah, absolutely. Um... Well, I've been practicing feng shui for 20 years. So yeah, I've done everything from DreamWorks and um, the, even Bank of America, uh, Morgan Stanley, like all these huge businesses. Because the truth is, is there's a reason why it's been around 5,000 years. Right. And just like I said, like everything's energy and it can either be blocking you or it can be supporting you. And it's a very, well, I know what I would choose, you know? Yeah. So these businesses truthfully find that when you feng shui the space, because when a lot of people go to work every day, they're like eight hours a day, which is sometimes longer than their waking hours when they're at home, right? For yeah. somebody who's at an office, like up to eight hours a day. So a lot of the time when a space is done at an office, people feel more comfortable. They get along better. They feel better. So there's less six days. They're more productive. There's more balance brought into the space. And so truth, the end result is there's more abundance in the company. Because mm -hmm. if people are sick and they're not feeling good and they're arguing, then it's creating a lot of disharmony. So pretty much most businesses have been feng shui But the beauty of that feng shui is, <clears throat> and the way I practice it, it's not like let's put a dragon here and a frog here. And it's actually, let's just work with what you have. Let's just have the energy support you. We'll set you up in best directions, set the furniture up so it's flowing. Let's look at colors. And then we work with the energy. We space clear um, because, you know, everything's made up of energy and any experience that are having a space, they go into the walls. So like if there's an argument, you know, divorce, a sickness, anything like those energies go into the walls, into the carpets, into the curtains. And if that's left there, that energy or those experiences will keep repeating. So if somebody new moves into a business or a, a new people move into a house, they may find that they have the exact same spirit. Like couples might be like, so weird, like we were getting on great and we moved in here and all of a sudden we argue every day. And then to come find out there was a divorce from the couple that moved out oh. prior, you know? Okay. So, yeah. so it's very important to have that art of, of cleansing energy and cleansing a space. Okay, so I want to talk about people working with you, but really quickly, because you mentioned dragon, and I'm looking at a dragon too. Um, the, this question is random, I just want to ask. Does our Chinese sign play at all in, like, do you ever look at that type of information when you're thinking about someone's personal environment? I'm a dragon, that's why. Like, oh, yes, awesome. yeah, absolutely. And it's a good year for a dragon, so you're for a good year. Oh, good, <laughs> yay! <laughs> and that really have like free will of choice with everything yes. as well. You know? like, yeah. And so I, I love astrology and I love Chinese astrology and Western astrology and our Vedic astrology. I, I love all of it. And I also feel that we have free will of death. There is certain things we've signed up for, but mm -hmm. I also don't like to give away my power and sit down and do a reading and say, this is what's going to happen. It's like, yes. no, we, we do get that, that choice, but the absolutely. Um, I mean, I, I teach all about this, about astrology and about looking at from when you're born based when the house is born, when the roof goes on, there's a certain energy cycle. It's like the, the, the house was born when we were born. And then we look at how you are in that house. And then if there's like four people in the house, how those four people interact with that energy of when that house was built. So it, it, it's amazing. There's like layers to us, you know? Yes. Yeah. And I think this is, you know, really beautiful about your work. I mean, obviously it, from even all that you've shared today, it seems like so much highlight again on that deep connection with ourselves, which through that we start to recognize the sacredness of our own being and then adding on the layer, like the sacredness of the environments that we are creating and I like that it reminds me of um, the word like empowering us that we start to recognize that we can not be like, you know, victim to or just affected by our environments. We have choice in it and we can yeah. actually manage it. And that's one of the things like I love of Reiki because it teaches you how to manage your own energetic field, letting you recognize that you have choice in how you function in how you um, vibrate in a frequency level, but understanding the importance of that internally and externally, that just, 
I mean, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah. Because we, we get to have conscious choice in, in, in pretty much everything. Some stuff is out of our control, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, but I look at this as like our, our temple, our physical body ho houses our spirit, but then our environment, our home houses our temple and our spirit. Like, so it's really important. And I love that you were like, you moved into your home. You're like, oh, why are all these beds facing east or whatever the direction? Right the front door be and, and you oh that's why you know and yeah. and and i really believe that we have soul contracts with homes you know sometimes you walk up to home and you're just like this is it this is the yeah. one like you look at 10 you're like no 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 but you walk in and it's just there's a soul recognition like mm -hmm. okay i i'm gonna have this experience with you i'm gonna help heal the house the house is gonna help heal me you know whatever the experiences we're yeah. gonna have at it and then when we're done that contract is done we're done you know but yeah we walk we know it <laughs> That's exactly, I mean, I literally, you know, walked in and was like speaking intuitively to the house the whole time, like, oh, and how I'm going to nurture you and the trees and this, yes, had complete, I was just in my own little, yeah, connection with the home. Um, so one of the things I want to make sure we share with people before we go, because you have such a beautiful body of work, and I told you this before, but it genuinely excites me to be able to have this space where all of us can learn from each other and you know connect with each other to have these different tools and experiences to support us on our journeys and it kind of you know just ripple effects like we all mm -hmm. continue to share out so again i'm so thankful you're here um but can you share with people one can we work with you remotely with feng shui and your spiritual coaching because you know i know you're in ireland and how can people connect with you Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, absolutely. I do spiritual coaching just like we are now, you know, face to face, you know, everything. Um, and so I do that. And I actually do remote like energy clearings. I can cleanse their home. I just, you know, tune into the space and I can clear it that way. I work. And then I do also like I teach the online feng shui certification training if you want to learn about feng shui or even share it in the world. And then I also have um, the inner circle of feng shui membership site where it's like 35 a month and you can join and I do two classes a month. And there's also a library of like three years of amazing oh, wow. Um, everything feng shui from even how to feng shui fashion to weddings to understand it for health um, just it, some really amazing classes in it and then of course there's in person and you were asking about and I don't think I, I properly answered so in May I, I'm doing a land clearing and land healing and so that's actually understanding those lines of energy I was talking about like ley lines mm. or other kinds of energy like I mentioned fairy lines and that's when somebody has you've got a fairy force on a, on a hill or a mountain and another one and there's a line of energy that leads the fairies to each other but you build a house right in the middle mm. it can upset them <clears throat> so eight, like back in ancient times they would actually get little hazel um sticks and they put four hazel sticks um from the hazel tree right in every corner where they wanted to build the house and they would ask the fairies they'd ask the land look is it okay if i, I build the house here and they would leave it for a couple of days and the hazel tree is, is very much so connected with the water so if there's water lines running under the house when you come back a couple of days later the sticks will have all fallen over and gone in the directions of the lines of energy or the water lines and it will, you will get very clear guidance it's not the right place to build the home wow. And it's so amazing. People knew that because they were so connected with the land. And uh, but nowadays it's just like get the bulldozer in, and you know. Right. And then there's illnesses in people living in specific areas and homes. And um, so it's it's so interesting. So <clears throat> this whole training in May is it's kind of like a priestess retreat because we do ceremony, we go to sacred sites, but then it's actually learning how to work with the land, how to help heal the land, how to let the hand, land help heal you. And then in in um, August it's Precess um, Remembrance and I'm doing that with a dear sister Laura Swan and it's going to be all about just honoring that that inner priestess and um, a lot of ancestral work you know because really we have to be willing to work on the lineages from before and heal whatever needs to be healed to kind of heal us in this lifetime and our future generations. So the Priestess Remembrance Retreat does that include shamanic work? Well, yeah, we do like fire, fire ceremonies and water ceremonies and um, and do, yes, shamanic practices. But actually the, the, the training in, in May, we're actually going to be like time traveling and shape-shifting. Oh, wow. So that's oh, very wow. much so shamanic yes. work. 
And then you asked about um, China and that's in October. And truthfully, like I, I trained with Feng Shui Masters over there like close to 20 years ago. And I have been promising my students, they're like, when are you taking us to China? I'm like, and then I had my son like seven years ago and it was like, sorry, he's too young. And now they're, they're old enough where I'm like, okay, so that's, and then that's actually sold out the minute within a week of listing it a year ago and it's not till October. So, cause everyone's like, when are you taking us? So, right. um, <laughs> so that is going to, to the home of where Feng Shui is from and going to these energy sites and connecting with it. And then also, um, one of my beloved goddesses, Kuan Yin. And so we'll go to Kuan Yin Island, the body Vasta and, um, do connect with her. And so that's going to be a really special trip as well. Oh, that is amazing. <laughs> There's so much, I'm like, goodness. Yes. Okay. So for us to be able to connect with you and people to learn more about your work, your personal sessions, retreats, everything. What is the best it's, way to connect with you? Yeah, it's all at amandacollins.com. Okay, and that's C-O-L-L-I-N-S. Exactly, and I have a podcast on there and lots of videos. I actually, as I shared, I'm out in nature every single day. And so I, I do this thing called Nature's Wisdom mm -hmm. because I just find when I'm out in nature and it's just silent and it's still like that's where stuff really comes through. You know what I mean when I say that? Yes. Like, just like, woo! Yes. <laughs> so I actually just, sometimes like after I meditate and I do my run or walk, or whatever I'm doing, and I'll pop on and I'll do a little like Facebook Live or something. And um, I call them Nature's Wisdom. And I do them a couple of times a week. So I have a YouTube channel, which I put them all on as well, um, Amanda Collins TV. Oh, and speaking of, so when people also go to your site and sign up for the newsletter, I saw that we also get a um, free guided meditation as well as some inspirational emails from you as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Cool. So every two weeks, um, or pretty much every week, I either send out like a podcast or, or video or a blog. I, have blogs I don't quite as much. I want to make sure that you tell us about that as well, because, you know, it's always great to find a good podcast. So what is the name of your podcast and where is it available? Yeah, thank you. Um, you can find on iTunes. Um, you can, I, I put on my uh, YouTube channel as well. It's on Stitcher and it's on my website as well. And I send it in the newsletter and um, I, I love it. Like, just like I can tell how much you love what you do and how gifted you are. And it's just such joy emanating from you, yeah. you know, and love. <laughs> and so I, I'll interview everybody from like, uh, priestesses like beautiful priestesses and um, anything from like conscious living from love to business to parenting um, and then I'll, I'll do a lot of personal ones as well on, on different opening up your intuition and um, all sorts of good stuff like that and that's called the Amanda Collins show so uh, if podcast, you go to Amanda Collins podcast, podcast. Yeah. okay the Amanda yeah. po Amanda Collins podcast so everyone go and look and um, just like I tell everyone with Reiki Radio, it's really great if you can, you know, rate the show, write a review, because it really does help podcasts grow. So um, mm -hmm. I definitely will be going over to support you with that. And oh. I did listen to one of your um, podcasts this morning, and it was gorgeous. So everyone, I think you really will enjoy her show. And Amanda, I have to tell you again, I'm very thankful that you came to share your work with us and I'm sure you and I will stay connected and I look forward to seeing you soon. Oh me too. I'm like, oh my gosh, like I, I love you the second I met you. I'm like, I love her. I love her. Like a, a true sister is like yes. we, like like as we met yesterday to chat, we we're like bah, 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 bah. it was like hard to say goodbye. So <laughs> <laughs> I know it's kind of worked for our show. I was like, oh I hope we can stay on topic. Yes, because I mean I just uh, your energy is amazing and yeah oh, so thankful for this connection thank you so much i'm so so grateful thank you thank you everyone and we will see you next week